This is the best experience with your host, Nick Best and the Angry Dad. And before we get into today's episode, I'd like to thank our podcast sponsors, Barbell Apparel, mm-hmm. a premium athletic wear engineered for performance with a tailored athletic fit, refined clothing for an athletic body type. Evolution Athletics, a supportive gear company owned by Brian Shaw, four-time world's strongest man and strongest man on earth. We believe in all athletes and supporting their journey towards greatness. Iced Up Industries, some of the best priced ice baths you can get in the industry right now. And you can use code BEST at checkout for $50 off on your whole order. That is code BEST at checkout. Make sure you check it out. That's Iced Up Industries. Please use the links in the notes. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. All right, Nick. Mm. Uh, we're uh, all you know. We're getting back into the swing of things. We had yeah. a whole bunch of stuff just happen where you know we mm-hmm. everything had to be put on pause, but we're back. Yeah. You know, and you know, with being back, you know, you have a lot of trips coming up. So you know, or a long trip coming up. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of. There's going to definitely be a little bit of traveling. Uh, I think. Uh, what is it? Next, uh, I think uh, Tuesday, which um, we had, to, I had to uh, Colorado, yeah, to test some of this equipment for uh, for the strongest man on earth. Yeah, so I get to hang out with Brian on Tuesday, so that's gonna be great. And then we come back, and then the twentieth, I live for FIFA, which is the FIFA Power Week. Um, so there's like Highland Games, stone lifting. Strongman contest seminars. Ed Cohen's going to be there. Uh, Gabriel Pena is going to be there. Yeah, there's I just so saw him. Many, yeah, there's so many people that are going to be there. It's it's absolutely amazing. It is the most beautiful spot to go and have a strongman contest, and it just is so primal when you're there. It's freaking neat. In the Hercules hold, I just I can't wait to get a hold of that again. That's going to be fun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because you made it look so easy last time. So it's like. You know, it's definitely going to be nice to venture it and then have the information yeah. needed before you step on the platform this time. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. It'll be fun. Oh, um, yeah. And then it's always great to see it going Kiki. Um, it really is. And they put on a wonderful show out there. And the FIFA Hotel is absolutely amazing. The food is absolutely incredible. They have very different standards for food than the United States. And they can have no additives in their food. So it's all... It, like if you're if you ate nothing but actually real organic, um, which there's an issue with Whole Foods That's now, size. but yeah. <laughs> um, but if you eat real organic food, it, that's what it's like. It's all real organic food. There yeah, real doesn't fresh. need to be labeled organic. You know, yeah. they're not bringing it in from no, oh, I don't know China. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so going up there, the food's absolutely amazing. It is an incredible week. It's just something you got to experience at least once. And then climbing and going down to the lake and just everything. It's just totally beautiful up there. And just, so, what, you're spending 10 days out there? Uh, the 20th to the 1st, so 12. 12? So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be sweet. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's going to be absolutely incredible. Looking forward to that. And then uh head over to the shaw classic in august so that's gonna be fun go to the thing in colorado get go to the strongest man on earth and then he's added more weight classes and stuff like that to the shaw classic yeah instead of just the strongest man on earth so that's going to be kind of neat so running all the contests and stuff at the same time there's an expo now that is absolutely incredible it it's it's the bomb i mean you go in there and it's just all really all these amazing people that just love strength. So it's, yeah. it's neat. It's truly a wonderful and amazing experience. If you haven't made that trek, you got to make the trek um, and then buy tickets and stuff like that. Uh, it's just, it's really moving the sport ahead and then uh, come back and then the giants live shows here in September 28th here in Vegas. So hopefully I get to come out there and hang out and see the guys and do stuff and go around and, Maybe they'll have a wrecking ball hole that I can jump in with. You know, and, and, so, and that's your back. That's your backyard. That's your stomping grounds yeah, out there. So this you is know, where I we, live, so that'd be a exactly. Lot of fun. <laughs> that's it. Uh, um, it was not that long ago. Uh, I just saw that Rogue had opened up a gym in Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm saying Rogue, if you're listening, make sure you uh, send uh, send that <laughs> invite to Nick out there because let me tell you right now, yeah. he, that's someone you want training in your gym. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I love Flex's gym too. So it'd be kind of neat to go see the rogue place and go in there and get some oh, training yeah. in and 
plus Callie and Dylan are doing CrossFit now. So <laughs> I think it'd be fun for them to come as well. Cause uh, exactly. Cause uh, Rogue, Rogue's the biggest CrossFit company out there. Yeah. They don't get much bigger than that. So exactly. it'd be kind of neat for them to see that and experience that and learn out there. So that'd be great. And then, uh, then we got OSG, which I'll be at <laughs> uh, in December. And so it's it's going to be a good fall. And then I might even go up and do the powerlifting meet in uh, Sacramento in your neck of the woods Yeah, uh, in October. Uh, exactly. Kind of make it up my mind because I can. Do, I, there's another one up there in March. So I might switch and just put all the effort into one and then go to – uh, the powerlifting meet in March, so we'll we'll see what happens with that. But exactly, exactly. But that's one of those out. things too. Exactly, you know, because a lot of people need to remember what it's been about a year and a half now uh, mm -hmm. since you got your kidney removed. So it's it, yeah. it, it you all you've done is try to correct the problems that mm -hmm. surgery caused, and even with that, surgery and cancer. Yeah. It, that's well, that's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> it's like there, the, you know, like you had to recover from that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you started, you know, like you, as soon as you were cleared to work out, that was the first thing you did. You mm -hmm. started working out, start trying to perfect the imbalances and then even seeing where the imbalances are, because, you know, that's one yeah. of those things is you're very meticulous on how you train and how your mm -hmm. body's reacting. It's something that, you know, right. you're so intuitive with because it's like, I'm slightly doing this and this is not safe. And you, you literally right. took the time back to like, like, all right, let me dissect this and see what needs to be done to, yeah. to, to correct these imbalances and, and the, these deficits that you have now. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, you've come so far and only in Thanks. a year and a half, it's like not very many people in the world, you know what I'm saying? Are coming back from uh cancer, uh, abdomen surgery, mm -hmm. and then trying to correct your, correct your, the imbalances to still be doing the weight that you're doing. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to put a little thought into it so it helps. But yeah, I mean, I noticed I was helicoptering a little bit um, with the deadlift as I was getting back up into the 700 pound range and it was causing a lot of issues that were going to make things worse. So I just took steps back, rebroke it back down, started strengthening the areas and now the areas are getting strong. So now I'm going to start bringing it back up. So That's it. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that, you know, one of your good friends is Ed Cohen who can uh, actually... Yeah let you know like hey i see this you should try this you know what i'm saying because since right. last norway all he's mm -hmm. done is stretch you and let you know what you need to do correct and it'll, it'll be good to see ed i i love that guy i mean i'd be still one of my heroes and i don't have a lot of heroes left there's not a lot of people as they get to know people that i, I will still look up to um at this age because i you learn more about him and stuff like that he's one of those people i still look up to it's it's kind of neat that you can put, you know, not only can you call him a friend, but you can still look up to him, man, because he's worth looking up to. He's a great example of, you know, what what I would aspire to be, you know, as a as a competitor, as a person, stuff like that. So it's it's pretty cool. It's, it's yeah, neat, it, it's extremely cool. Like every time I've uh, been around Ed and hang and uh, got that chance to hang out with you and him, mm -hmm. it. Look, he he's constantly putting everyone else up above him. Yep. He, he's constantly trying to to uh, inspire people yep. to lift heavy and do it correctly. You know what I'm Correct. saying? He it, he like it, whether it's a seminar, whether you meet him in person, he gives the time to talk just like you do. And it's like mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and it, like I said, it sometimes it, it it I know it frustrates you and it upsets me a little bit, but it's like this younger generation just don't recognize him. And you know, like I said, I think that it, it's starting to come around more because he's more on social media, more doing the mm -hmm. seminars. And a lot of times, you know, like he's one of those people that have revolutionized powerlifting and the way. Oh, yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, is the, the stuff he was doing was back when they used the same bar through everything. So yeah. you didn't have these joke of deadlift bars that give four or five inches, especially for the sumo guys, before it comes off the floor where you, the, the bar is so thin, you can actually double thumb lock it which is yeah. no different than wearing wrist straps i yeah i do not understand why that's allowed other than it hurts if, yeah. if you don't let go of the the thumb you you you're basically lifting the straps as far as i'm concerned yeah but um 
yeah, I mean, he did that with a with you know, mix match grip. The guy's grip was like insane, absolutely it's insane. I'm still hands. afraid to shake his hand. Yeah, his hands are ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like when you look yeah. at it, like it, it, it's it's funny because like I said, uh, Ed's a great guy, but man, he has got like the perfect body shape for powerlifting. Period. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Well, that was proven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, and like I said, I mean. How much more is he going to pull on a bar that's going to give four to five inches before it comes off the ground? Exactly. You know, biggest mistake a couple of these sumo deadlifters did was wear uh, Adidas socks before they went and did the lift, and the bar is like an inch below the the three inches of Adidas, you know, uh, lines. Socks. Yeah. And then when it comes off the floor, it's an inch over that when it finally completely comes off the floor, and it's just like. Why <laughs> do that with a stiff bar? But that's why the deadlifts in the IPF, you see, they're still pretty darn good. Yeah. But you don't see the sumo pullers pulling a thousand on an IPF bar. Oh, yeah. On, on oh, the yeah. Alico bars. It's, you know, they're, they're too stiff. So it's, it's really gotten to the point where it's destroying the longevity, the, 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 the true meaning of the lift. You're beating records. With different equipment, yeah. I mean, if you're using, if you're going to beat the record, beat it with the same equipment the guy set yeah. the record on. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So anyway, my, it's, yeah. that's my soapbox for today. Well, well, then here, but, and here's the thing. Let, let let's steer it in a different direction uh, because you just said illegal bar. Uh, what's your top three favorite bars? And if you had to pick one, which would would it be? Um, uh, bare steel just has some bars that I really, really like. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Texas Power Bar, you really can't go wrong with. They've been around for, I don't know, forever. <laughs> At least 40 years that I'm aware of. Um, so probably longer. Sorry, guys. Um, and then the Alico Bar. The Alico Bar is absolutely amazing. The, the one that they use in the IPF, which yeah, it, it's a fantastic bar it truly is and there's a reason why the bar is 1100 bucks because yeah it can handle the weight and yet not bend or you know so it's it's a it's a great bar those were probably yeah. my top three bars there you go and so uh uh deadlift bench and squat uh, mm -hmm. uh would you the illegal bar completely all the way across or do you have a preference between the three right there well, I, I, me in a perfect world, I'd like to see the Alico bar all the way across because it's it's wide enough for you to get your hands in. And if you really need to put out your hands wider than that, stretch. <laughs> stretch. If I can get into that thing, if, if I can get into the width of the Alico bar at 55, at 300 pounds, come on, you, you can get into the thing too. You're not working your mobility. So work your shoulder mobility. Get in there. There's ways to do it. So you, you really don't need the extra extra wide bars. So uh, I, I like the Alico bar. I would like to see it done in all three of the lifts because it's one bar. You buy it. You're good. You only need one. That's it. Instead of this having like a bar for squat, a bar for bench, a bar for deadlift. It's like, you know, you're, you're lifting with $1,500 to two thousand dollars worth of bars in three lifts it's like why exactly <laughs> anyway um but everybody likes to break records and do stuff so you know do you think it should be uh easy. records uh per equipment like you know i hold like if someone holds a record i hold the record on this kind of bar i hold the record on this kind of bar <laughs> should it be that way at all the yeah. across <laughs> I, i'd like to just see it one across because not everybody needs a participation award. You know, okay. You either set the record or you didn't. You know, yeah. um, I can see there being a tested and a non-tested. That I can understand. But other than that, yeah. it, it should, it, I would prefer it all be with the same equipment. That way, it's the same all the way across the board. You either did yeah. it or you didn't. Exactly. But that's what I would prefer. Yeah. Well, and also, too, like, uh, you know, you get a lot of people, too, like, they have records, and then, you know, and like, you can only set a record in an official 
uh, sanctioned uh, powerlifting uh, powerlifting meet. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you you get a lot of people that you know they they're setting records or doing records at gyms in their home and stuff like that. And they that don't too. have two national referee or two yeah two national referees or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm okay with setting a record with, you know, two national referees and a and just a regular ref, or three national referees. I'm I'm fine with that, but you have to have the quality. They're judging to to do that, so, um, I, I it's just just what I think. I mean, it's it's going to be unpopular and people are going to not like that, but. I, I think it's right. I mean, the WRPF, now you have to do it at a national level contest, which is great. But mm -hmm. what if you can't, you're, there's schedules in people's lives and stuff like that. And the fact is, if you can get the refs there, that's all that matters anyway. It's the same refs that are going to be at a national level meet as, as a non-national level meet. So it's you're neither here nor there. I, yeah. But it's up to the federations. Yeah. That's uh, just how it goes. So uh, let's go. Let's go through the records that you hold. <laughs> uh, let, uh, let's go through the records that you hold. Um, mm -hmm. What's the oldest record you hold? Uh that's kind. That's kind of hard to say because I haven't looked at some of them in a long time. Um, the oldest record I hold is the Farmers Walk in, in Strongman is the Farmers Walk World record. I did that in two thousand six. No, oh, okay. So at the Ifs Worlds. Um, where I broke uh, Andres Marmetz's uh, record going 75 meters with two turns on the IFSA handles, which are about six feet long. And the handles yeah, are huge. right. Yeah, and they're right inside the implement, so you can't get them off your legs, which is what makes that event actually so hard. Yeah. Um, that's probably the longest one I've had that I can think of as far as records go. Powerlifting-wise, um, I was the first person, which the record's been broken, but I was the first person in California to squat 800 drug tested. It's the first person in California to total over 2,000 drug tested, and that was in 96, which is why I want to squat over 800 again because that'll that'll make it, this will make it 28 years. That's it. That's it. In a contest. That's, it. that's insane. So that would become cool. That would definitely be cool. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a long time. Yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool and i mean it's it's some of the longevity speaks for itself some of the just determination and not caring if it hurts or not um because you you kind of have to you, you're gonna hurt yeah it's it's gonna happen yeah. um aging people don't do anything and they hurt so might as well have fun while i'm doing it and i'm in a I'm in a spot where I can still do things 20 year olds can do. And I'm in my mid fifties. So, you know, it, it, the quality of my life as it goes on, um, I'm going to be able to do a lot more muscle mass and grip strength is a very good indicator of, you know, longevity. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. That's it. Well, you know, like, mm -hmm. like I said, right up top, you, you're, you, you have trimmed down, mm -hmm. you d damn near have a six pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, kind, of, uh, kind of funny. Kind of funny. <laughs> it's it's it, you still have that muscle density there. And mm -hmm. was it uh, last uh, sometime this week? You just farmer walk. Was it like three thirty five? Yeah, three thirty five at hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you For made it look easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, eh. I'm like, oh, I'm getting close to the end. I'm just gonna slow down. All right, here we go. Exactly. So <laughs> it was. Uh, it, it felt like a good run. That's. that's it's feeling good. My grip's feeling good with it. My movement's yeah. feeling good. My feet are, my steps are getting much better. Just like I did the yoke two weeks ago uh, with 700 and was actually, I got my foot steps back. I got my pattern back. Yeah. And so now rhythm. it's the rhythm. And now it's just accelerate, work on the, work on the pick, work on keeping the speed. So like power wise, you can't really tell but my streets at a slight angle. One one way it's going down slightly, and the other way it's going up slightly. So when I want to train the power and the drive with the yoke or the farmers, I'll go uphill. And when I want to train the speed, I'll go downhill because it gets down and it flattens out. Yeah. So you get you keep that speed through the flat spots, and it, it helps you accelerate a little bit. 
But yeah. too much of a grade, though, you got to decelerate it as you're going, you go too fast, and that's bad. So uh-huh. it, it, it ends up being a great way to train it. It oh, really yeah. does. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, before we get out of here, Nick, um, mm-hmm. we're actually, uh, Nick is actually working uh, with John Anderson. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're working yep. on a mindset uh, training program where yep. what it is, is Nick's, uh, Nick is a champion. John mm-hmm. is a champion, mm-hmm. strong man. John's also done bodybuilding and, and pro wrestling. But the thing is, is like, it's the mindset. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people always ask you, what are you thinking about? What are you doing? But here's the thing is like, you've never had a dedicated program to that, to like, you right. know, to offer to people. So now you've actually uh, are doing that now. Yeah. It, it, it's Patreon, right? We're on Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. Uh, right on so, Patreon. Yeah. So if you look up on Patreon, Elite Ageless Mindset, that's John and I. And we'll talk about the little things that you need to be doing every single day, the patterns you need to get into, and the steps necessary to be better and to get better and to be the best you can be. And it's and it's an elite mindset that that carries you there. It's the way you think. It's the way you look at things. It's, it's all the little things that you need to do and steps in order to become successful because – being successful is an accumulation of a whole bunch of small little goals and objectives that you accomplish every single day without even thinking about it. But this will get you thinking about it so that you can do those better so you can reach higher levels. And that is correct because that's one of those things is like everyone always wonders what's the secret sauce. Well, guess what? That secret sauce is the mindset. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know it's, it's the way you line out your day. It's the way you line out your sleep. It's the way you execute everything during the day. And, you know, there's, the three P's and the favorite one is purge. You know, you have to find something that you do every single day that keeps you from getting better and purge it. That's it. You start cutting everything that's going to make you and make you not perform well or hold you back. And you purge those things. Eventually you're going to get pretty good at whatever it is that you're doing. And this applies to everything. You know, you, you come in with three positive things a day. That's the first thing. It's three positive things. It's three, two, one. And then two, purpose. What's your purpose? How are you going to go through it? You know, how are you going to execute this? What's your plan? How are you going to do it? And then the fourth P is purge. You're going to get rid of something that messes you up. And that is actually going to, you know, uh, that'll give you the fourth P, which is what? Progress. Progress. So you'll continue to progress and get better at whatever it is that you do. These things work for everything in your life. So, you know, it's go check it out. You know, it's, it's going to be neat. And John just nails some of the stuff just dead on the head. I mean, mm-hmm. just goes right on through it. And we both talk a lot about, you know, how we managed to do what we've managed to do and things we've seen other people do. Yeah. And it's a way to guide and steer your way through not only training, competing and everything else, but your whole life. So it's it's a way to be successful in life as well. Exactly. And guess what? You can find that at Patreon at slash mm-hmm. Elite Ageless Mindset. And mm-hmm. Nick, as we get out of here, you have we have a favorite saying that we'd like to hear from you. Well, as always, if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, train hard, train smart, and be the best you can be. <laughs>